Hello crochet friend. Thank you for joining me today for a yarn review and I'm going to be starting on a diagonal knit blanket. So here we go. Um, these, this is like one of my most favorite yarns to work with. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very easy. It's called the Bernat baby blanket. It, the, it comes in a lot of colors, a lot of like nice variegated styles like you can see in these finished works. This one is called Baby Sand. It's a nice neutral color. Uh, these are both super bulky, uh, size six. Uh, the recommended hook and needle size for these are 11, eight millimeters. These are the one, uh, it's uh, fun, the, co the color is called Funny Prints. It's a variegated color, as you can obviously see. So to get started on our review, what do I like about um, this brand of yarn? Well, first off is the texture. Like, uh, as you see, it's super bulky. It's really, uh, it's, it's a nice substantial feel to it. It's really soft. The end product is like really soft and, and uh, I would say fluffy in this, in this design. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it is, uh, and maintenance it is really easy i have run these through machine wash machine dry stays pretty much the same it does not peel it doesn't um the the yarn texture does not change it's still ultra soft i would say it's really really soft and then when it comes to cost these are not really expensive uh i've gotten these from amazon and from some other websites but amazon's good uh i just have these a uh, quick tip i just have these added to my cart sometimes the price could go up and down depending on demand so you know sometimes some certain colors i would say if a color is more uh, there's more demand for a certain color the price is going to be higher but for the most part it's not it's not bad like uh, one skein like this has what uh, it's 10.5 ounces 300 grams and it ha it gives you 201 meters of yarn length 220 yards and then when i when i do this pattern this is about 27 and a half by 27 and a half square so uh, this is i made this by uh, using one skein so it's a, it's a relatively small square and what I've liked to do is to just um, sew like I made two squares and then I just join them together using a tapestry needle. So it's up to you. There's plenty of other designs that you could do. Usually the labels would come with a uh, design, um, a free pattern at the back. So and then, you know, I believe that's what you would also see in the um you know I, you know what actually let me let me just check to make sure if that's the case i can just open this one i don't want to give you any false information there you know what let me just cut it make it cleaner where is make sure we're not cutting oops i will probably be cutting through the design but oh well uh, let me try this again Oh, okay, that's working. Here we go. All right. So this is Shadow Cable Knit Baby Blanket. Um, it has a good intermediate level of difficulty. It needs two balls of this. And let me see what it says again. Shadow Cable Knit Baby Blanket. It looks like a cable knit. So it, would, it could likely be that what is pictured on the label is the pattern that you get. Um, actually, let me say for sure with the second one. I just can't find the labels for these uh, ones that I finished for now. So these are my best bets. Almost there. All right. Okay, so this one says Peaks and Valleys Knit Baby Blit baby sorry baby blanket peaks and valleys yeah that makes sense <laughs> so and for this one 
uh, the it, it does say which colors you need to buy to get this particular design so these are helpful because I would say this you know as much as I love the texture it doesn't really work with all kinds of stitches I tried it with C2C my, my favorite crochet pattern but it doesn't come out as pretty I feel like this very very simple diagonal knit for me is the best application for this yarn I've made like a full blanket I'll insert the photo in here I've made a full six panel blanket it has a nice it it ends up with a nice uh, volume so if I fold this before you see how you know how chunky that ends up and this is only two squares so you could join you could join um, I made it two by three to make a six panel blanket and it, it was it was a, a, of a good weight and then I've gone over the maintenance that, you know, it's very easy to machine wash. And obviously you're not, you're not needing to wash a blanket every day or something like that. Um, and I would say that's it. So to get started, I started on, um, I, I, I want to make a quick note about the hook size, the um, hook size, needle size to use for this. So I've started the diagonal pattern using the baby sand uh, let me untangle these now all right so i've started the pattern and i'm actually going to start with a frogging in this case so i said earlier that i need um the the label recommends size 11 size 11 uh, knitting needles for this but I um, based on what I had done before I this is to show you what size 11 looks like and after I did f the first few rows with these the because of the bulky nature of the yarn this actually if you can see that it like curls up a little bit it doesn't really lie flat it tends to be like tight because you know it's bulky and with the with this size needles they end up being tighter than you would like you know you know it doesn't look like this where it's more relaxed and it just you know it falls down naturally so what I would actually recommend for this pattern is bigger size hook, um, sorry, needles. And, you know, just to show you the comparison, these are size 11 and these are Chao Gu. Let me find the label that's engraved on here. Uh, I hope the camera can capture that. These are the Chao Gu size 13. So these are 11 and this is 13. So up close, you probably see that, you know, it is a good size, uh, bigger than what is being recommended. So um, you could do a trial and error um, with whatever pattern you decide to go with. But for this one, um, I'm going to be using the size 13. And I am going to show you now how I begin this pattern. So... To give you uh, some quick pointers, you don't really need like a complicated pattern for this diagonal. So essentially the concept is it's all knit stitches. Wrong side, right side, it's all knit stitch. Super simple, you can do it in front of, the, of watching a movie, in front of the TV. You don't need to be reading a pattern. That's why I, I kind of love it. It's very straightforward. And what we do is we start with one stitch one stitch that's for row one row two we will have two stitches row three will have three stitches so it keeps increasing we increase each row by one stitch i'm going to show you how to do that and then you will end up with something that looks like an inverted triangle and you just in keep increasing like that so to show you in this finished work so this is basically where i started 
this lower lower corner here and then as each row grow, goes we add we keep adding a stitch and then it ends up like this you end up with a triangle like that and then once you get to the middle of it now we will start decreasing stitches and then from where from its widest point you start tapering off until you end up with um, the, the the last row having only one stitch and here side note obviously I ran out of yarn <laughs> so you don't see it quite uh, it should end up something like this so now obviously when you have two triangles put together you're really knitting a diamond shape I don't have my camera angle far enough for you to see the whole diamond but to give you in a different perspective basically it looks like this you start with a single stitch increase and then when you get there you decrease until you get to the diamond the the tip and that's how you end up with a diamond and then when you turn it a square side then it looks it gives you the illusion that you have diagonal knits but you didn't actually knit diagonally does that make sense <laughs> Okay, so if you're interested to learn, stick around, um, you know, it just takes a few minutes and as I, as I said, just keep repeating the same, the same stitch over and over. So since this, this is not the result that I want, I don't want something that is like curling up like that, I want it to be flat. So we're going to undo this and, and it only has this because I did some trial and error, like I used a small needle here and then they started using the big needle here. So I'm just gonna undo everything and start from the beginning and there you can see how to work this. Um, interesting, very simple, very fun pattern. So here I am unraveling. We also call this frogging if um, knitting is new to you, knitting crocheting is new to you. So, okay, we're going to start with a slip knot so you just twirl this around your finger, take this end of the yarn, put it in front, take this loop that's on your finger, again put it in front, and that's how you end up with a knot, and then just pull that. You don't need to pull it too, too tightly, you know, just the proper um, tension there. And then we're going to put our needles now. So again, these are size 13. And side note, I prefer to use stainless steel knitting needles. I've used bamboo, I've used wood, I've used plastic, but I just like the feel, um, the smoothness and the speed that I can work when I'm using stainless steel. It's just for me, super easy. I don't like it when the stitches like bunch up together and and it's just very hard for me to work like that so if you're a beginner we're going to start with a knit stitch and the way you do that is we have our left needle here your right needle goes under the stitch under the left needle okay put a pause here if you're trying to make sure you have the right position I'm gonna move forward. We're gonna do our first knit. So to do that, you put yarn over hook, uh, yeah, yarn over needle, and then we pull this through, we pull this needle through that first, um, that, that knot that we have, and then uh, we take it off. So that is our first knit. Okay, so if you need to tighten it a little bit, just make some adjustments there. And then you switch hands, you move the, right, the other needle into your right hand. And sometimes these cables can get thick, so you might need to maneuver those needles a little bit so you can be comfortable. Now, this is row one. We did one knit, row one. Now we're going to do row two. We're going to increase this stitch to give us two stitches. So we're going to do the first knit like we did the first one. We insert the needle under, you yarn over the needle, 
and then you have to pull that through this way right and now typically you would just like remove this right but we are going to increase this so stay there for a second this is how you do the increase um, we are going to twist see it was on it's on top right now because you pulled it out right we're going to twist it you're going to go back under so we're going back to the first position where it was under the left needle and then now you have to reinsert it into your into the back of this stitch so insert it are you seeing this i hope you're seeing this properly insert it like that and now when you look here again you're back in that position where you were two seconds ago where you have your right needle under the stitch and under the left needle pauses here for a little bit if you need to rewind and, and make sure you have the position correct and after your your you have everything followed correctly now we're going to do the second stitch so we're going to do yarn over needle and then just you know use your finger to kind of like guide the yarn in, that it stays in place now we're going to pull that yarn through to the front and voila now you have two stitches where we just had one before okay so i'll let you pause here go back try that again sometimes this can be a bit tricky um you you may not get it the first try you know just keep trying just keep practicing and obviously as part of knitting if you're a beginner you also need to kind of adjust to the in terms of tension your knit is not it's not going to look perfect in your first project so just take it off the the needle and keep practicing you know practice is going to make perfect so now we're going to move on ahead this is now our second row we're going to go to a third row which is going to give us three stitches so third row we're going to start off with one so same thing insert the needle under the stitch yarn over needle pull it through now you have one so we're, again we're going to do the same thing we're going to increase this first stitch we're going to make one into two so again twist it around and then we put the needle under this first stitch it can get tricky just keep practicing and then now we end up in that same position where we were just two seconds ago and then we're going to like this is this is how that looks like on the underside right and then we're going to i'm going to do it from this angle i'm going to yarn over needle and i just use my finger to like you know you know help else it's going to be loose so just help that help that uh, yarn stay in place and then i'm going to use the needle to pull it out and now i have my magical two stitches and then pull that off the left needle so i have one two three and then i'm going to do the last knit on this row inserting yarn, the the needle under that stitch it's going to be tight so just you, you'll get used to it and then yarn over needle and then just help that finger help that yarn along there with your finger and then now we're going to pull that to the front take this off and now we have three stitches so it's not going to take much shape yet since we're just starting but you're kind of seeing like a mini baby triangle there so now again same drill switch your needles over so any guesses which row we're going to work work on now we're going to work on the fourth row so fourth row is going to have four stitches yes you guessed right now you're following so we always increase on the first stitch that's it simple that is the that that's the that's the pattern <laughs> that's it so we're going to do two stitches on this first stitch pull this twist this around 
put it back through the back. Yarn over needle, just help that yarn stay in place and then pull it to the front using your right needle, take it off the left needle and now you have two stitches. And now we're gonna do for the rest. Under, yarn over needle, pull it to the front, take it off the hook, needle under the stitch, yarn over needle, pull it to the front, take it off the left. And this is our fourth row. So you see it's starting to take more and more shape. It's not looking curved, which is good. I'm going to do a couple more. You can just fast forward this part if you already got it. But um, some folks might appreciate seeing a few more rounds here. So I'm gonna do that. First stitch here, twist it around, insert to the back. Um, there's a name, there's a particular name for this stitch. I'm not recalling it right now, so I will just add it to the title, uh, to the description for this uh, video. And then we're just going to do, we've increased the first, we're just going to knit one for all the remaining stitches on the needle. So I'm going to do this quickly. Just feel free to forward again if you got it, you don't need more detail. I'm putting this in for our friends who are beginners. So we're done with row five, we're gonna do row six, increase the first stitch, knit one, twist, knit one again from the back. Pull it to front, take this off, knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one All right so you see it's starting to take more and more shape now next same drill increase take it off knit one knit one Knit one, knit one, knit one. Okay, so uh, now I feel happier with the tension. It's the nice, it's the right kind of tightness I'm looking for. It's not like curving or anything like that. Next row. Triangle is getting bigger. Increase the first stitch. Okay, so we are up to our ninth. I'll probably do three more rows. Increase the first stitch. It's 
So now we have two stitches for that first one, and then we're going to knit one down to the last. Okay, so we want to test it. Looks like that. I think it's a good um, to compare with the tension. I think I connected these in the middle. It's kind of um, similar. Oh, this one. I don't know. This I made a little bit loose, but. I think I'm happy because I don't also want it to have like big gaping holes. So, you know, you you can just um, adjust according to your preference that whether, you, you know, you, you'd like it tight, but I like it like more relaxed, like what I've done previously. Okay, let me do one more row and then that's it for this video. In my next one, I will post an update when I have uh, reached the middle of the diamond, the square, and I have to start doing the decreases. I'm going to show you how to do that. So how many did I do? Um, like, I guess my knitting might be getting a little bit tight and I might need to adjust my tension. So I think I have 12 right now, three, six, nine, 12 rows, exactly. So this, this is what it looks like as a triangle. And later on with the end product, this is what it's going to look like on the diagonal. Like I say, it's chunky, chunky it's fluffy, and uh, it's it's really soft, and um, this this yarn is really really nice and worth the. Um, you should uh, you should definitely give it a try. That's it. I will be back, like I said, um, for another video. So good luck with your project, and post in the comments below. Subscribe and like to see the next ones that I would be posting. Post any you know questions, comments. What would you like to see? Uh, what kind of difficulties are you having with this uh, with this? pattern and all that and uh, i'll do my best to answer and um, help you out again thank you so much and um, take care bye